Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions and today I want to show you the Grandstream GWN 7711P, a layer 2 light switch. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to take a closer look at the switch itself, what comes inside the box. We'll go through the data sheet and then we'll fire it up on the network and take you on a tour of the actual user interface. So that said, let's go ahead now and take a closer look at what comes inside the box. So it's very simple Grandstream packaging. It's just your typical Grandstream brown box. Nothing fancy, but it does the job. Inside you get the quick start guide, the power brick and power cord with a barrel connector on the end. And then you get the actual switch itself. So taking a closer look at the actual switch, on the front of the switch you have eight gigabit ethernet ports. The first four are PoE. We'll talk more about those as we go through the video and then the final four are just non-PoE gigabit ethernet ports. On the sides of the switch you have air holes for venting. On the rear of the switch you have your barrel port for power. You have your reset button, a Kensington lock, and a grounding lug. On the bottom of the switch you have four rubber feet for mounting on a desk. You also have the option of mounting on a wall and then you have your Grandstream sticker that has the serial number, MAC address, and the password and each Grandstream device comes with its own unique password. So now that we did that, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the specs. All right, so we're on Grandstream's website and this is the data sheet for the GWN 7711P Layer 2 Lite series. As you can see, we discussed a few minutes ago, it has the eight gigabit ethernet ports, smart power control to support dynamic PoE, PoE plus power allocation per port, it supports loop detection, cable test, and port mirroring. It supports IGMP snooping, LLDP. It can be managed by GDMS Cloud and GWN Manager. It supports broadcast, multicast, and unicast storm control, and it has built-in QoS. Taking a closer look at the specs, the power supply is an external 48 to 53.5 VDC slash 1.22 amps. Again, the PoE output is described here. We'll go through that more as we go through the user interface. The total max PoE out is 60 watts. The auxiliary port, it's a one reset pinhole on the back. Total non-blocking throughput, eight gigabits per second. Switching capability, 16 gigabits per second. It does support jumbo frames all the way up to 15,000. And then let's see, it supports up to 32 VLANs. It also has eight preset VLANs inside. So we'll talk more about that as we get into the device itself. It supports lag, multicast, QoS, and let's see, under security, storm, co storm control, DCHP snooping, spanning tree, loop prevention, PoE watchdog, Kensington security slot on the back, which I showed you. And yeah, so that's about it. Now let's go ahead and get signed into the unit, but first I have to power it up. So let me switch back to me and we'll take the power adapter. Now I've already had this out of the box because I showed it on a live stream a few weeks ago briefly, but I did reset it to factory default so I could take you through the process and show you what happens out the first time you take it out of the box. It does power up and come online pretty quickly. So we have power and now I have an ethernet cable here. I'm just gonna plug it into port eight and give it a second or two to power up. And let me just log into my Grandstream GCC 6010. We'll see what IP address it gets. So we come over to the networking nodes and we come over to clients. It's already booted up here. Here's a 7711P and it's got an address of .111. So that's what we'll try to connect to. Okay, so the default username as with every Grandstream device is admin. And the password, again, is on the bottom of the box, but I took a picture of it with my phone. So the initial time, you gotta log in with the password that's on the bottom. And the first time you log in, 
you can see it's prompting you to change the password. So let's go ahead and we'll do that for now. Okay, so we have our password change and it takes you right to the overview system info page and you can see all the information here, the MAC address, the IP address, the subnet mask, the gateway, the serial number, or everything regarding the actual switch itself. You can see the total PSC power is 60 watts and the PSC remaining power is 60 watts because we haven't used any of the PoE ports. If we come down to port info, you can see the basic port info and the power supply information here. You can see none of the PoE ports are powered at this point. If we come under system and we look at the IP settings, here you can set your address to static or DHCP. For now, we'll just leave it set to DHCP. You could turn on DHCP option 43 under switching. Here are your port settings. You can see here it supports jumbo frames. And like we said earlier, looking at the data sheet, it goes all the way up to just over 15,000. So, but the default is 9216. Under lag, it supports four lag, being it's an eight port switch, so that makes sense. You have MAC address search and spanning tree. By default, spanning tree is turned off. Under VLANs, under port VLAN, you could see here, here are the actual eight preset VLANs. Remember, it's a layer two light switch, so out of the box, it gives you VLANs one through eight. However, if you want to create your own VLANs using your own custom VLAN IDs and things like that, all you have to do is come over to 802.1 QVLAN, enable it, and when you say okay, it's going to tell you that it's going to disable the port VLAN. And once you do that, now you can go ahead and add your own VLANs and treat it just like a regular VLAN situation with your own VLAN IDs, and then you can tag and untag your ports. So it's cool that it gives you the actual VLANs right out of the box, but if you're a, more, a little bit more advanced user and you want to create your own, you have that ability as well. You can dedicate a voice VLAN. It does support IGMP snooping, QoS, basic QoS, port mapping, queue scheduling, rate limiting. Under security, here's your storm control and your DHCP snooping. By default, it's turned off. Under PoE, here's your power supply info. So total number of PoE ports, total power input is 65 watts. Total PoE power is 60 watts. PoE consumption at this point is nothing. So the remaining power is available 60 watts. If we take a look at the power supply settings, now if we go into port number one, you can see that the first PoE port supports 802.3 AT and AF, but it also supports 24 volt DC four pair and 48 volt DC four pair PoE as well. Ports two, three, and four support 802.3 AF and AT and only 24 volt DC two pair. So again, it's the same for port three and it's the same for port four. So the only port that supports 48 volt passive is and four pair 24 volt is port number one. So keep that in mind. It does have PoE watchdog it does have the ability to monitor port statistics, port mirroring. Here's your cable test area, and here's your loopback detection. And then under maintenance, you can upgrade. Now it's up to the latest firmware. I did that during the live stream. Uh, under backup and restore, you can export your backups. You can import, and then you can also do a factory reset, which is what I did before this video to show you an initial setup does have a built-in ping tool and then it supports SNMP, notification management, trap event, and then LLDP it supports, which by default is on. So that's a quick look at the GWN 7711P. It's a really cost-effective, feature-rich switch retailing for about $65 USD. Let me know what you think about this switch down in the comments below. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. That's about it for now. Take care.